this is that most of the instruction for new believers is going to come from teaching at church anyways. So it's good to help people and to be a friend and to encourage, you know, especially someone that you lead to Christ. But you don't need to take on yourself the burden of just teaching them everything about the Bible. What's probably going to be more effective is just being their friend, giving them that connection to be, to be someone that they know cares about them, that you can help build them up and edify them and help to get them planted in church. Because really, the discipling classes are taking place here on Sunday, twice a day, and on Wednesday night. This is the discipling class. This is the teaching class. This is when there is a teacher that's, that's providing, you know, the milk and meat of the word. I try hard in my sermons to be able to give enough for everybody to understand. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always as meaty as I'd like it, or sometimes it's not always as milky as I'd like it. You know, sermons vary, but... I try to make it so that everybody who's here, regardless of where you're at spiritually, can benefit, can grow, can receive something to, to keep moving forward by, to, to grow there with. And if there's a new believer, they're going to get some, some of the sermon. They're going to be able to, to get some milk. And they might not get everything that's being taught, but that's fine. And for those of you that are much more spiritually advanced and grown, it doesn't hurt to have a, little, have a glass of milk with your meat anyways. Right? It's not as good to, to hear things repeated, but hopefully you'll be able to hear even more and then grow that much more thereby and, and, and get the whole thing. But that's what's being done here in church. So one of the best things you can do with new believers is just, just be a friend of them, you know, help edify them, encourage them, you know, deal with their specific issues. And, and help them to, to get past those. Because oftentimes, what, what, one of the main things that gets people out of churches, especially independent fundamental churches like this one, is they'll start getting uh, attacked by people in their personal life. That's probably the number one thing that's going to get someone out of a church is that they're going to start learning some things. They're going to be talking about it a lot more because people usually do. And then their relatives or their friends or, you know, somebody's going to start saying, oh, you, you know, and giving them a real hard time. And then, you know, trying to tell them, oh, did you see this person on the news or, you know, you know, and just try to offend them or upset and shake up their faith. But if they have people who are already edifying them and supporting them, it's going to make it easier for them to still stay with it. And not to be offended when the, when the you know, like the, the parable of the sower. So, you know, the sun comes up, it's scorching, you know, people who can't handle the heat. Well, if we're edifying one another, especially new believers or whatever, you know, it'll help them to get through that. It'll help them to stay grounded and founded. Ephesians 4 just basically explains why I believe, you know, this is, this is where most of the learning is going to happen anyways is within church. If you look at verse number 11, Ephesians 4. The Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse number 12. So why, now we don't have apostles today. But he's talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers as, as gifts or people that, that God is giving. And then in verse 12, he explains why. Why are these, these type of people there at all? Verse number 12 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So he's saying there's people out there trying to deceive. There's a lot of false doctrine out there. But this is why God has given pastors and teachers and evangelists so that the work of the ministry could be done so that we can all come in the unity of faith. We can all understand the Bible and, and, and uh, believe the Bible and have the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man under the statue or the fullness of Christ and that we won't be children anymore. So the growth is going to come through the pastors and teachers, through the evangelists. You know, that's where the growth is going to happen. 
That's where you're going to learn the doctrine. It's going to be here. It's going to be in church. That's where, where it's a big, uh, it's an important aspect of that. Obviously, you should be reading the Bible on your own and being taught through the Holy Spirit on your own as well. But there's a good reason why God ordained the structure of the local church, of a New Testament church, because it is important. We don't believe in this house church stuff, or just, oh yeah, I have my church at home when I you know, sit down and read the Bible with my kids. No, that's family Bible reading time. I think everyone should have that. We have that at my home. But you know what it's not? It's not church. 